In this video, we will try to understand what exactly is this thing called as TFS and how is the architecture of TFS structured. So let's start with you know first easy things. TFS stands for Team Foundation Server. So let's start first with the easy thing that is the full form of TFS. It is Team Foundation Server. A successful software project is all about proper collaboration. Now, uh, when we talk about software project, you will have different kind of people working in it. For example, you will have the management, you know, must be the CEO of the company uh, who is indirectly uh, looking into the project. You will have project managers in the project. You will have testers. You will have developers. You will have the end user, etc. Now, if each one of these guys, you know, they collaborate with each other in a proper manner, then definitely your software project will be successful. And every person in the project is important, even if he's directly involved or he is indirectly involved. For example, the CEO of the company, right, uh, he is the important person to fund the project. So if he does not trust the project, he will not fund it. The project manager, if he does not motivate his team members, if he does not look at the process of the project, you know, the project will have his own issues. In the same way, if testers do not test it, then you will get a defectful project outside. And, you know, if developers do not code, then you will not have a project at all. <laughs> Right. So in other words, you know, every of these team members are important and their collaboration is is very much important. And that's what exactly TFS does. TFS, you know, you, you can think about TFS. It's a it's a server product which basically uh, sits on the server and, uh, you know, helps all of these team members to collaborate with each other. And the best part about TFS is that it gives complete flexibility to the end user, you know, by the way which they want to connect. For example, the CEO would connect to TFS, you know, by using a simple browser if he wishes. So in other words, if he wants to see uh, reports, if he wants to see the status of the project, he can just use a very simple browser. The project manager, you know, uh, probably he can use simple Excel sheets, you know, to go and assign tasks, you know, uh, and allocate uh, or do project planning, etc., you know, by using a simple Excel sheet. In the same way, uh, a tester can use a tool like Microsoft Test Manager to create test cases, log defects, do testing, etc., and uh, developers can use their favorite Visual Studio tool to check in the code, uh, you know, probably to go and confirm saying that he has done some task by using the Visual Studio team system or Visual Studio tool. So every, you know, individual, you know, they can use their own means, you know, by which they can go and connect to TFS and complete their activity. So that's one of the very uh, best part about TFS that it does not, you know, put any kind of restriction on the kind of uh, what you call client, you know, they want to connect uh, or client they want to use to connect to TFS and uh, do tasks. So summarizing or in simple words, we can visualize uh, TFS as a central server product, you know, where software team members can connect and collaborate, you know, efficiently for a successful software project. So now that we have understood what exactly is TFS or what is the use of TFS, now let's try to understand the architecture of TFS. Now TFS has two major parts. One is the server section. You know, on which the TFS server is installed and the second one you know are the clients you know who are connecting to TFS now when we say clients means you know when different project members you know connect with their favorite tool for example the developers can probably connect to TFS using VSTS you know the project manager can connect using MS office the testers can connect using MTM so one is the client part of TFS and the other one is the server part of TFS now let's try to understand the server part of TFS now TFS at the end of the day is a simple web application which is installed on IIS. Now one of the things in software project is reporting. In other words, managers and customers you know, would like to know probably how the project is doing, how many defects are there, how is the schedule going on, etc. So in order to display reports, TFS uses SQL Server reporting services. So that is one more, uh, you know, what you call requisite, you know, in case you want to derive reports from TFS. The other important product which is a part of TFS is SQL Server. Now any data which project team members push to TFS gets stored into SQL Server. In other words, it's either developer who is checking in the code using VSTS or probably project manager pushing his project plan using MPP or testers probably uh, you know filling in defects using the MTM or whatever it is, everything gets stored into SQL Server. So nothing gets uh, stored on a physical folder of hard disk. What it also means is that tomorrow if you want to move your uh, server, you know, to some other location, the most important part is SQL Server. Or, or if you say that you want to create a backup plan or if you want to backup your data, 
then what you need to do is you need to back up the databases of TFS. One more important component of TFS architecture is SharePoint. If you see one of the clients you know by which the end user can connect is the browser. In other words, there should be some kind of mechanism by which we can expose this TFS data through the browser. And that's what exactly this uh, SharePoint box does over here. SharePoint helps you to expose the TFS data using the SharePoint portal. So if you see overall, right, TFS is a combination of SQL Server, reporting services, IIS, SharePoint, and then the different clients who can connect to should connect to via TFS like VSTS, MS Office, MTM, browser, etc. So that was the overall architecture of TFS. Now, when you start installing TFS, you know there are two types of installation. One is called as the basic installation. So you can see that I have a simple wizard over here, and you know this wizard uh, you can see you know basically represents uh, the team foundation server configuration. So you can see at the left hand side there is there are there are two ways by which I can configure this. You know one is basic and the other one is advanced. So what what exactly this basic and advanced means? You know let me explain that. Now basic means that you know you only want source control you only want to track your work items you only want to do build you know you are not interested to do reporting you do not want to expose your uh, tfs you know uh, via sharepoint portal so if you do not want a sharepoint portal as well as the reporting services then you can select the first one or else you can go and select the second that is advanced one so in simple words what it means is that basically uh, Advanced installation means you know you are going to have everything over here and basic installation means you are not going to have reporting services and you are not going to have SharePoint. What it means is that all of your you know means all of your clients you know can definitely go and log defects you know they, they, they can go and check in the code uh, you know they can go and uh, you know do the complete project management using TFS but you know they cannot see this complete TFS data via SharePoint in other words via the portal and second you won't be able to derive reports you know from the TFS data. So there are two kinds of installation, you know, one is the basic installation where you are just interested in doing checking in, checking out, logging defects, you know, but you are not interested in reporting and SharePoint and the other one is advanced installation, you know, where you are interested in basically doing all of these things that is right from reporting to exposing your TFS via the portal, you know, uh, checking in, checking out, you know, using the test manager, everything. Right. So depending on your needs, you know, you can either check, uh, the basic installation or you can check the advanced installation so now that we understand tfs we understand the architecture of tfs uh, we also understand that basically why we need tfs now the next question is once you get a software project from where do i start how do i create a project how does a developer check in the code how does a project manager raise a requirement how how does the tester actually goes and logs in test cases how does it test how does he log defects so we would like to see now the complete project life cycle you know fitting into this TFS. How does thing work in TFS? So in the next video, we'll see, you know, how a complete project life cycle can be managed using Team Foundation Server. Thank you very much. Now, whatever video you have seen, right, is just a glimpse of uh, what we have done. So in case you are interested in our video package, uh, you can go to our site that is www.questpon.com. You can call on this number and you can ask the, the complete DVD package what we have. So in this DVD package, what we have done is basically we have covered almost everything what a .NET developer wants. So right from basics of uh, ASP.NET, object programming, SQL Server, to new technologies like WCF, Silverlight, Link, Azure, Entity Framework. Uh, we also have UML uh, architecture, estimation, project management. There is a complete invoicing project end-to-end -end which is covered so that you can get a better feel of how to actually create projects in a systematic manner. Uh, we have covered server products, you know, both for SharePoint 2007 as well as for 2010. We have a lot of best practices video on SQL Server, etc. So this complete package, you know, you can get from www.questpon.com if you're interested. And you can call on this number and uh, you can ask for the rates. It's it's a very uh, decent rate what we have. On the same, in the same way, uh, you know, as compared to the videos, we also have one more uh, product with us that is our interview question books. So we have uh, different kinds of interview question books, you know, right from, from .NET interview questions to SQL Server interview questions, uh, SharePoint interview questions, BizTalk interview questions, etc. So in case you are interested in the books part, you can, you can call on these numbers as per your location. So you can see these numbers on the board at this moment. So I hope that um, you keep enjoying the videos, uh, you keep seeing our 
uh, site and I hope that you gain more knowledge. Thank you very much.